Coming up on today's episode of Airborne Unmanned, Leonardo unveils its largest drone. AUVSI urges overall airspace management approach to UAS security. And Japan outlaws flying a drone while drunk. Welcome to Aero News Network's Airborne Unmanned, a weekly news program covering all things unmanned. In partnership with AUVSI, the Association for Unmanned Vehicle Systems International. I'm Sophie Herlock. At the Paris Air Show, Leonardo introduced the Falco Explorer, its largest remotely piloted air system. The drone has a payload capacity of 770 pounds, more than 24 hours flight time, and a satellite communications capability for beyond radio line of sight operations, all within a 1.3 ton maximum takeoff weight. Everything is designed in-house by Leonardo, and the Falco Explorer will be offered as both an integration platform and as a fully managed information superiority service. The RPAS is undergoing certification for flight in non-segregated airspace, meaning Leonardo will be able to pitch to civil customers such as Coast Guards and emergency responders, as well as the military market. The RPAS is expected to take its maiden flight later this month from Terrapani Airport in Italy. And a series of trials will take place throughout the year, wrapping up with a flight campaign with the platform's fully integrated sensor suite on board. The Falco Explorer could be delivered to its launch customer as early as 2020. Now let's take a quick look at a few stories making rounds of the unmanned vehicle communities. It's time for today's Unmanned Minute. The U.S. Army announced the Howler Counter Unmanned Aerial System achieved its initial operation capability, giving soldiers critical protection against drones. Howler, a name created by the U.S. Army, combines the capabilities of Raytheon's KU Band Radio Frequency System, Multi-Mission Simultaneous Radar, and Coyote Unmanned Aircraft System. The KURFS Advanced Electronically Scanned Array tracks all size UAS threats, Coyote works with this system using its advanced seeker and warhead to identify and eliminate UAS threats. Yesterday, DJI introduced DJI Government Edition, a drone solution made specifically for use in high security situations by government agencies. Drones using the Government Edition will not require activation through DJI and is shipped with custom firmware that blocks accidental or malicious breaches of data by making sure the drone and its remote control will not pair with off-the-shelf components. The DJI Flight Control app has been changed to permanently allow local data mode, which prevents any connection from the app to DJI servers. At the Uber Elevate Summit, architecture and design firm Corgan revealed a concept for their Skyport Mobility Hub, a modular connective and sustainable infrastructure for Uber's EVTOL flying taxis. Corgan's design is a system of components that enables speed to market, provides flexibility to scale operations, and can be customized as both a greenfield solution as well as a retrofit atop existing buildings and parking garages. Raytheon Company has signed a strategic agreement with AirMap to collaborate on further projects to safely integrate unmanned aerial systems into the national airspace system and unlock both economic and social benefits of expanded commercial drone operations. The agreement combines the two companies' expertise. Raytheon Standard Terminal Automation Replacement System, which is used by air traffic controllers to provide safe aircraft spacing and sequencing guidance, and AirMap's Airspace Intelligence for UAS Operations, which helps drone pilots request authorizations to fly in controlled airspace. UC3M is collaborating the Telefonica R plus D plus I project together with the companies Divisec and Dronatech, in which they have developed a sustainable innovation pilot project for early detection and prevention of forest fires through drone technology. The UC3M researchers have developed the complete automatic flight system, as well as the interface with which the emergency service can access information about what is occurring in real time. Now back to the rest of the news. At a hearing held by the U.S. Senate Commerce, 
Science and Transportation Committee subcommittee. On security last week, Brian Wynn, president and CEO of AUBSI, called for accelerated federal rulemaking and the development of holistic policy solutions that provide the framework to keep the nation's sky secure. In his testimony, Wynn emphasized the importance of approaching UAS security from an overall airspace management perspective. He outlined three necessary conditions for UAS security. A holistic framework for detecting, tracking, identifying, and mitigating UAS. Securing UAS command and control connections and the data UAS collect. And well-defined procedures for how to respond to potential security threats. Careless and clueless operators can pose safety risks and paint responsible legal UAS operations in a negative light. While criminal behavior can jeopardize the security of our airspace, Wynn said. As the number of UAS in our nation's airspace continues to grow, it is vital our regulatory framework around UAS evolve to address these potential security challenges and ensure technologies are put in place to detect, identify, and mitigate UAS which may pose a threat. The Japanese parliament passed a law making it a criminal offense to fly a drone while intoxicated. Those convicted of flying a drone weighing more than 7 ounces while intoxicated can be fined up to 300,000 yen and face up to a year in prison. The new law also lays out fines for pilots who fly their aircraft in an unsafe manner. For instance, if a pilot intentionally plunges a drone towards a crowd, that pilot could be fined up to 500,000 yen. Other restrictions imposed by the new law include no flight within 1,000 feet of Japan's armed forces, U.S. military personnel, and defense-related facilities without prior permission. No flight above 500 feet. Avoid airports and crowded areas. No flying at night, and the operator must be in visual contact with the aircraft at all times. No license is reportedly required to fly a drone in Japan at this time. And that wraps up things for us today. Thanks for watching and don't forget to subscribe and to check us out on Twitter and on Facebook. And for more information on the innovative world of all things unmanned, head over to auvsi.org or airborne-unmanned.net. Have a great day.